Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single trinket, every single trinket, and every single trinket in The Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined by a guy who has the same motto as the critic from the TV show The Critic, Gary Butterfield. Akam! God, Gary, I'm glad we're friends. <laughs> yeah. That made me really happy that, that you went to uh, Occam. I, uh, you know, my wits have not totally left me yet. I haven't died in a Tetris effect stoner <laughs> hole. I would also have accepted buy my book. Yeah, <laughs> buy my book is the other other good uh, good catchphrase. Yeah. I say Occam all the time. Uh, so do I. Yeah, I love it. Occam. No one gets it because not that many people watch the critic. Not enough people. At first, I was like, so I wanted to go down and, and guess like the uh, Bob Mackie does that talking Simpson show, and I'm like, oh yeah, again that Simpson show. And he did a critic one. I'm like, that's awesome. I love the critic. Like nobody ever talks about the critic, mm-hmm. and I missed that. But now I've also missed the first like eleven seasons of The Simpsons. Yeah. So I think if I ever get down there, it's going to be real, real rough stuff. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, you know what? Later Simpsons a jockey episode. Yeah, Later Simpsons still has my favorite Bart line, which is where uh, I feel like I may have even mentioned this on the show before, but people, uh, it's the second Lurleen Lumpkin episode. Mm-hmm. Where uh, she gets obsessed with her dad, so they like she removes all like the dad words from their home, mm-hmm. uh, including the snap, crackle, pop on his on Bart's cereal. So he goes mm-hmm. to try to pour it for himself, and it just pours out on the floor. <laughs> and he just wearily mm-hmm. goes, "You know, you think it would be fun living in a house with crazy people, but it's actually just really depressing." That's good. It really that line. It's got I, that self that self awareness that uh. You know, that, that sometimes works out in later Simpsons. Yeah. That's like not the, not the, the episode 300 Tony Hawk self-awareness, but the good kind of it. Yeah. Gary, it's a special day. What day is it? It's Trinket Sunday. Sunday, Monday. Trinket. Days. Tuesday, Wednesday. Trinket. Days. Thursday, Friday. Trinket. Days. I. Yeah, I was about to say you had a little Bono energy on that one. <laughs> it's Trinket Sunday. Little Bono the on the ball. The child. The child brings me a fish head. Um, it's a trinket. Here's the thing about this trinket. Yeah, it's fish head. In case you couldn't parse Gary's it's accent, fish head. It's fi- it was thick. It's a it's fish head trinket. When you hold it, you spawn one blue fly every time you get hit. Obviously, not that big a deal, but I can handle this a lot better as a trinket than as like the four items that fucking do this. Oh, absolutely. Like uh, I'm on the record as saying I don't necessarily like items that trigger when Isaac takes damage, mm-hmm. but hey, it's a trinket. Yeah. I uh, I agree. Like in a trinket, you got I got no problem with your fish head. Now here's the thing: later they introduce the fish tail. Uh-huh. The fish tail can be transmorphative. Yeah, I don't like that's a really good off one. the top of my head. I couldn't tell you what the fish tail does. If you make flies, it doubles the number of flies. Well, that's fantastic. That's much better than yep. this. Super cool. So, and you, there's no fish transformation, which I would love. You get them both. But. Yeah, I guess it's kind of just Beelzebub. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. uh there's not a ton to say here. Uh, we are on the record as saying blue flies are great. Mm-hmm. They do double yep. Isaac's tear damage. Yep. This will probably kill whatever hits you. Yep. And uh, and again, uh, trinket not a huge opportunity cost. The um, so fish head. We were talking about Doctor Demento. It's true. Fish head is a uh, a Doctor Demento like classic song. Mm-hmm. That they play like every single episode of that show. Yeah. Pretty much, just in case you forgot about the roly poly fish heads, which is like a novelty song, but I think it's more just scary than anything else. Yeah, Gary, uh, not counting the the oeuvre of Mr. Albert Yankovic. Uh, okay, Alfred Albert, whatever. Uh, what is your favorite like Doctor Demento ass novelty song? So song is tricky. So my favorite thing on there is that's where I first heard the the Dead Alewives D and D thing. Yeah, me too. I I, I feel like yeah. we can just take that one as red. Because that's that's my favorite, and I used to like listen to it every Sunday on a chance of hearing it. Like I loved it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. You know, I think it probably still holds up pretty well. It does. And there's a second one which not as many people have heard that doesn't hold up quite as well, but is still actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, as far as actual song, uh huh. Um, you're, you're asking me in a state of inebriation. As far as what I are, and this is true, just even in non Doctor Demento context. Uh-huh. Um, I think that the melody of Shaving Cream is super good. Okay. Probably not my favorite of any of those songs, but that's a good melody. Yeah, I think I'm torn between I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than have to have a frontal lobotomy. Oh, yeah. That's a good, yeah, that's fine. I also have a lot of affection for Bulbous Buffant. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bulbous, Bulbous Buffant. Buffant. Blubber macadamia. Bulbous Buffant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. 
There's not a whole lot of them. Like Weird Al is really just kind of the guy. It's like a bunch of weirdos in the '60s, and then Weird Al, and that's kind of yeah. It. God, like Doctor Demento, the man knows a talent to latch onto. Yeah, yeah, I love him. He's dead, right? No. Oh, really? Yeah, still, still alive and kicking, to the best of my knowledge. Still, they haven't put him away. <laughs> that's good. Shit, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I got nothing. Yeah, on we talked side, about trinket, that. We talked about the trinket. I'm just trying to trying to solve for time until I can think of another segue, I guess. Yeah, me too. Uh, I kind of associate Dr. Demento with that same kind of DIY comedy aesthetic that uh, MST3K is a big part of. Mm-hmm. Are you an, I would, I would, yeah. are you an MST3K oh. guy? So, like, you can call me a guy. Okay. Like, of it. I like it. Um, I watched a lot of it um, in the, the Joel Hodson uh-huh. years. There are episodes with Mike that I like, but it never quite caught me the same way. Yeah, I'm a like Mike once. guy. I, I get it. Like he's in some ways he is superior. The sense of humor definitely changed. Like the Mike years are much snappier. Yeah. And I feel less weird. And the the weirdness is what I grew to appreciate of the Joel stuff. Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh they're all of them are like a really great example of how no one ages well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is that's one hundred percent true. Yeah, yeah. Rough stuff. Um the uh and then the the reboot I haven't watched. I, I watched like the first episode and I was like, yeah, this is good and clever and I like all the people, but it's just, I, I think that it doesn't it, feel right to me. It doesn't because I, I'm not 12. Yeah. It's just, yeah, that's what, that's what MST3K was. We also had, um, did you, do you know about who, who Sven Gulli is? I, I am, you know, Sven Gulli is still rocking. Uh, the, yeah. I, it will actually freak me out every Saturday because I'll see Sven Gulli trending on Twitter. I'll be like, Jesus, do I have to write a fucking opit for Sven Gulli? Oh. I hope not. He's going to be at the uh, Milwaukee Midwest Gaming Classic Ooh, that we're going to. Gary. So he was there last year, but I couldn't find him. I walked around looking for him because I want to get a picture Maybe of him. Maybe he was in a coffin. <laughs> You're going to say car accident <laughs> in that voice. Maybe he was at the oncologist. <laughs> um, he's, uh, yeah, me and my friend Austin were super into, uh, into Sven Gulli. Yeah, it's like and, Elvira, uh, but without the challenging sexual connotations. Yeah, and I would say more jokes. Yeah. Like Elvira, like just, you know, Elvira does kind of some puns, but mostly is there for sex appeal. I mean, she had two comedy movies she starred in. Have, have you ever seen any of those? Uh, like when I was 13 and looking for stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never seen them or anything. I, that sounded like I had, like, uh, either sounded like I, I was going somewhere with it or I was stalling for time. Yeah, no, they're just like and really actually, funny, like, let's save the, like, I think she's actually like saving a community center in the first one. Yeah. Gary, have you ever played those fucking Elvira adventure games? I certainly have. Cinemaware? Yeah. I think it's Cinemaware. Like, yeah, 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 those yeah. are rough. The, the same, the Waxworks people. Yep. Those, yeah, those games suck. are like incredibly gory and weird and yep. like. But the, they're unplayable though. Oh, absolutely. They have bad RPG yeah. elements and they are, they fall into that design school that is like, yeah, we'll let you fuck up your entire game with one yep. bad click. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, just fun to read about though. Like there's a, just a little cross promotion for Cole to give him some kindness, even though he never left fucking listened to the show <laughs> is, uh, he, a very early hex crank. Oh, is about, that's right. Uh, waxworks, I've, 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 and that's very yeah, good. I've, uh, I've enjoyed yeah. that actually. Yeah. And super good. Um, yeah. Yeah. What are your, uh, yeah, Gary, I feel like we might've talked about this before, but again, we're just killing time, even though we did do sure, a 20, I fall asleep. we did do a 20 yeah. minute episode this week of really yeah. primo content. So we could probably just mm-hmm. call it early, but, uh, fa- favorite, uh, adventure games, not from Sierra or Lucas, not from Sierra or, or legend so you, or legend. Yep. Or legend. Um, maybe the Blade Runner game, Westwood, the, Westwood, uh, Blade Runner game. Yeah. Maybe the only good or at least interesting Westwood game. Mm-hmm. I, like really cool, like interview stuff. I actually know. I mean, the answer to that's Callahan's, but that's, that's I don't that's think legend. of that because that's oh, that's legend and it's new. So I wasn't thinking about it. But outside of that, probably the Blade Runner. The Blade game. Runner game is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I've never played it, mm-hmm. but it does. I, I know that it picks like who the bad guys are every time. Yeah, it's ra- it's like a roguelike adventure game almost. Like it is a randomized plot, or it randomizes whether you you are a replicant too. Yeah, and and which bad guys are. It does both. Um, Super, super cool. Yeah, I I remember when I was in my home of the underdogs days, which was a site that still catalogs abandoned wear, but used to be like the place to go to get it. Can you still get it there? I don't think so. Or you have to go to my abandoned wear. I think you have to go to, I I do Abandonia, but 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember reading about those fucking Manhunter games. Yeah. Which are also of the school of, like, uh, one wrong move and you are fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah. Like, leave that to to the Hardcore Gaming 101 guys to actually play. You know, like, you don't necessarily want to play those, but they are interesting as hell. Yeah. I, I was thinking the other day about how funny it is that they never made a Leisure Suit Larry 4. Yeah. Good That's joke. a very good joke that they jumped from three to five. Have you watched that trailer for the uh, new Larry Suit Laser, Larry uh, Leisure Suit Larry? Game? I I can't, Gary. All modern Leisure Suit Larry games make me so depressed. I I yes. I want to die. <laughs> That's the correct answer. It's pretty dire. Uh-huh. Like it is repulsive. Is Al Lowe involved <laughs> so, at all, or is it just? I can't remember. I think that he wasn't. He was at one point and is not, or vice versa. Yeah. Like there was a movement, so it's hard for me to remember. I have so much affection for those old Sierra folks. Yeah, those are great. Uh, Scott Murphy yeah. and uh, Mark Cohen, who did Space Quest. Hey, folks. Future Will here. Uh, it's actually Mark Crow, not Mark Cohen. My apologies to the two guys from Andromeda. Also, in about a minute past, Will is going to fail to pull the Blackwell games by Wajet I and Dave Gilbert as his favorite non-Sierra, non-Lucas adventure games. Those are fantastic. You can pick them up cheap on Steam usually. Strong recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh one of my favorite things in any Sierra game is at the end of Torrent's Passage, uh, you have two items left and you're sneaking up on the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you use the right item, you just get the ending. But if you take out your bagpipes and play them instead, <laughs> it literally has a video pop up from Al Lowe being like, you're my kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> I love that kind of Easter egg. Yeah. What, what, uh, what's your uh, non favorite non LucasArts non Sierra adventure game? Oh, Gary, Gary, Gary. You asked me these questions and we've already talked about games. Because I am a huge legend guy, and I eliminated that so you couldn't say Callahan's. Yeah, well, I'm eliminating it. Fuck you. Yeah, boy. Um, oh, I don't have a good answer, man. It's hard. Do you like Sanitarium? It's fine. I think Sanitarium is first, good. First third's good. Yeah, first. I think the first third is very good, and then it's fine to kind of add. Yeah, it, it really nosedives after a while. Yeah, but the beginning is extremely That good. ending puzzle can go... Eat whatever yeah. you don't want something to eat. Yeah, it's really, really bad. You know what? Uh, I have a lot of affection for uh, the Activision Zork games. Oh, yeah. Those are good. Uh, Grand Inquisitor is really funny. Uh, Nemesis is just really fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Good answer. Good answer, I think. Or Mist. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a real slipper. I think that's a puzzle game. Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> and that's this is where we're litigating this. Yeah, it's like <laughs> nine a, minutes. I'm in a fighting shape. An episode of everything to copy. Yeah, yeah. This is this is we're finally laying out, and after that, we're gonna <laughs> when we eventually do our Boris worm, we're gonna define roguelike. So look out <laughs> for that. We're gonna settle all the internet arguments. Um, all right, Gary. I feel like we've done due diligence here. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gary, I was re-listening <laughs> to the show where you did. I went into Donald Duck voice, and you just said, "We've got to die." Yeah, <laughs> we, we have indeed got to die. Um, Patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV. We, we love you. We love it when you do it. We, God, we and love then, it. Got to please do it. And uh, and also uh, ratings and reviews. And this time, let's say you throw them on just regular old uh, podcast app instead of somewhere weird, you know? Yeah, just uh, maybe give us some fucking feedback so we don't aren't just spinning our wheels. <laughs> yeah, we're guessing a lot. If we're not just... <laughs> sad drunk men talking about adventure games on our Piney of Isaac show. One of the things that I learned with, uh, with Brayton, with Teenage Dirtbags, which is the show that I've done that has the most similar energy to this, even though it's very different. Yeah. Um, we had the episode and it was very funny because we both, you know, and, and it's going to sound like I'm, there's two anecdotes of me like getting stoned. I don't do that very yeah. often, but uh, me and him both had an edible and then it slowly creeped up on us at roughly the same time recording when we all thought it would kick in after the recording. Uh-huh. And, it was both of us just being very, very stoned and not wanting the other person to like, you know, try to hold it together for the other person, yeah. but also, you know, so it was a really, really great situation. And then afterwards we realized and it was like, oh, that fucking sucked. And we apologized for it a lot. And something I think that we realized was like, oh, you get to do this once. Yeah. Like, it's kind of funny when we start the next set of episodes and we're just like, hey, bright and sober, you know, or whatever, however we reference this, if we remember it, like this won't be cute a second time. I know. I mean, I haven't been drunk for an hour. So this has just been yeah. pure sober will. Yeah, yeah, but I am descending into madness. Okay, like it is not. It, it's only growing with me because I laced my thing with whatever killed Grandpa or whatever <laughs> drugs he does. Yeah, you, you were know? doing a little bit of phone sex with Cousin Bell. Yeah, yeah, and uh, is, and, is um, Cousin Bell named yeah. after Ma Bell? Probably. 
Yeah. Anyway, in con- we know it wasn't didn't have to rhyme. Yeah. In conclusion, Fuck OJ it. was innocent. Yes. <laughs> so you know, OJ was innocent. Um, Tanya Harding. If you uh, if you like the show rings reviews, we said that bit. Yeah, we said all this bit, Gary. I didn't realize you were fading. I just assumed this was regular collapse. No, 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 no. This is super collapse. Okay. All right. Well, good night. Good night.